Hello, and welcome back to VMworld Explore and theCUBE's wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm joined today by Dave Nicholson, who's really the principal in, of CXO Insights. Glad to have you on here. I think we can jump in. This is a little, little back and forth, because I think we've been seeing some similar trends in what some of the announcements have been here around VMware Explore and what's going on. And uh, you know, why don't we jump right into it? I, I think, again, both of us have been other places and seen things around in our analysis of this. And I yeah. think, uh, you know, the, I always thought it was pretty funny when people thought it was going to be anti-competitive with Broadcom buying VMware. I, I, because I look at it and VMware has such a huge CSP, cloud service provider type market that they've been selling into with vCloud Director and a number of other different product sets that aren't really totally highlighted this week, but there is a strong presence. I know they're here. We're going to have some of them on later in the week. Um, what have you been seeing? And what have you been hearing? Because I, I think that, to me, is an underlying theme that really isn't getting talked about here. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say that uh, starting out this morning, I thought the keynote was brilliantly executed. And uh, I was looking for sort of the uh, behind the scenes announcements. And what, I, what came across loud and clear, loudly and clearly to me was sort of the one-two punch of we are going to increase competition via our cloud strategy. And then they also address something that maybe kind of flew past people, but having NVIDIA, the leader of NVIDIA up on stage was huge. Yeah. Because one of the concerns that was raised in the EU and the UK was this idea that there would be an anti-competitive dynamic introduced um, in, this, in, in, you know, in the guise of uh, Broadcom making it really hard for other hardware providers to integrate with VMware. And boom, NVIDIA front and center, who happens to be a customer of Broadcom, right. put just wood behind the arrow of no, 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 no. This is an ecosystem that's going to thrive. It's, uh, customers will benefit from this ecosystem moving forward. So yeah, we can go into more detail on stuff like uh, the cloud strategy, but no, I think it was, it should have been a message well received by by the VMware community customers at large. Of course, folks who are part of VMware, the company, are going to experience, experience uh, change in, in the future as we all do in tech constantly. But no, I think it was largely positive and very well done from a keynote perspective. Yeah, and, and you know, off, off the record type little conversations I've been hearing you know, is that actually emails have even already gone out to certain parts of the community where internal employees and stuff about some of the changes that are coming. And I, I think that uh, what's interesting to see is that, and I, th I think you, this is a good, good place that you went there, I think there's a community here that wants to embrace AI. The cloud service providers that are out there want to embrace AI, and they want to see NVIDIA up there, right, you know, Jensen in front of Hoktan, right, and, in the front row there, I thought that was very, very symbolic of the relationship and the openness that they're going for. And I think a big push is, you know, and Hock Tan even said it in his little part of the taped interview, the taped part of the opening was, we're going to invest in R&D and in the ecosystem. And I, th I think that's a change from what had been happening under EMC and Dell, where the ecosystem became way more closed. I was uh, saying on our opening this morning that uh, there, there's over 80 uh, hands-on labs right behind us next door here, and out of that, only five of them are from partners. Those five partners are all hyperscalers right now. So it'll be nice to see that ecosystem and be embraced and see how that changes over the next uh, coming years. Where, where do you see uh, some of the other things that you heard this morning that may have really piqued your interest about how this, you know, this could be really successful? Well, uh, you mentioned that we've each been at other places yeah. at various uh, times in our history. Um, uh, one of the things that I did was uh, work on the team that, that produced the Azure VMware solution that was acquired by Microsoft. Yeah. So I spent a couple of years crawling around in the belly of the beast that is the software-defined data center stack. Right. In other words, uh, you know, everything from uh, VCF through everything having to do with this idea that you can put a VMware layer on top of hyperscale uh, cloud provider infrastructure as a service and, uh, and really subjugate those hyperscalers to, to that model. That's not something that would have happened readily under EMC's leadership. 
in another life. I was at EMC when we acquired VMware. So when I see mentions of latest iterations and development that's being, that's being worked through on things like vSAN, but in particular NSX, what I see signaled to the world is that they're serious about continuing to pursue the cloud strategy. Now the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. Um, you and I were talking about this off air. Networking is absolutely at the center of this. Yeah. So an organization's propensity to either adopt or reject NSX will determine just how much this promise is fulfilled when it comes to that part of the strategy. Yeah. So it's all about networking. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think networking is the linchpin that connects all of these around. It's made, it originally made cloud a reality, is that fast network, big bandwidth, and being able to have those pipes where you could move your data and your workloads up there so that people could use things like VDI or you know, different types of access methodologies to get at their data. And then, you know, with clouds and being able to have that, I mean, of course it started with three-tier apps and web, you know, web logics and all that up there and all that old school stuff. But I, I think what is really interesting is networking has just become so much more complex. And I think part of it is the security aspect of it. Part of it is just the complications and APIs between the different clouds and the service providers in between them. What are, what are you seeing when you're looking at that complexity as well? Uh, so, so I would say that, um, that my advice to private clients and others yeah. uh, is that the complexity is worth it. That once you actually get these environments instantiated, the benefits that you'll derive are worth it. Uh, one of my roles is to be a program leader in, the, in uh, the Wharton CTO Academy. And so my CIO, CTO students, um, are often asking, how do, I, how do I generate consensus or consent to make investments in things like a new networking topology that's going to deliver all of these, these benefits? And so I would say that strategically it's going to be you know, just as important, more important moving forward to realize this vision of uh, VMware Cloud Everywhere um, to help those customers those CIOs, CTOs, senior decision makers, help them articulate internally the value of this investment. Mm -hmm. Don't undersell the complexity involved. Be upfront, admit, hey, it can be complicated, but once we get past it, once it's, once it's put in place, boy, is your life going to be a lot easier. So just because it's complicated, doesn't mean that it's, that. I don't think that's a negative, and I don't know if we're going to have to go to uh, 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 San Francisco Giants versus uh, Red Sox <laughs> discussion in order for us to disagree on something, but I mean, what, what a, let, let's, let's try to yeah, find something uh, where we have contrasting I, views. I, I was going to say, I, I think that, interestingly enough, I think it's not, it's not just one topology, and I think to your, to your point, to a certain extent, I think it's people, because these different networks have some companies have become multi-cloud by accident. And I, I think when, when you start to look at how do they re-architect everything, I'm not sure that everybody's going to go to just NSX Plus. I think going to a PaaS service and making NSX a PaaS service, which is, seems to be the direction they're taking NSX, uh, with NSX Plus and it being SaaS offering and having some data lake behind it for understanding configurations, makes a lot of sense. I just wonder, how that jives with all of the different complexities of load balancers and all of the different partnerships that you have there. Are you going to put a load balancer behind a load balancer inside a cloud network? And I think that, that those complexities, because hey, maybe Azure does it a certain way, and Amazon definitely does it a different way with ALB and ELBs, how do you bring this all together? I think that, to me, is, is really the challenge that VMware has, is that these, networking is complex. NSX does a certain job at abstracting it, but it can't be the full boat on that. Yeah. And I don't know if that's how you see it or. No, I completely see uh, it that way. I, I, to I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> I'm, trying, I, I'm sitting here trying to think, let's, like, let's yeah. pick apart what he yeah. said. Um, the only thing I would say is, uh, I, I like to clarify that whenever we talk about multi-cloud, it's like, yeah, it's kind of silly. IT has been multi-vendor. It has been multi-tool. Yeah. 
forever. And it always will be. And even, even the term, even when we talk about cloud, I think at some point we'll sort of back off on using the term cloud because cloud is just another tool in the IT toolkit. Uh, the one thing that I, that what you just described, uh, 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 my heart is warmed by what you said because it's true, uh, because what it equals is job security for human beings for at least a few more years yeah. and hopefully beyond that because good luck AI trying to sort through all of this stuff. It's complicated. It, it needs smart people to, uh, to put together still yeah. and for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think the cloud architects are safe. I think yeah. it will be, and I, I, I liked some of the messaging I think we'll start to hear tomorrow around that uh, VMware is going to talk about upskilling and helping the VM admins who've been very loyal. I mean, they talked about 150,000 VMUG members yes. as part of that. that. I mean, it's a huge community that they have yeah. here, and that's always something VMware has done better than anybody, I mean, for years and years. And I think part of that is how do you bring them along on this journey? And it's not just about the products, it's about the solution and the ecosystem. I think, it's, I think the VMUGs are going to have to get more open again. I think that, you know, again, when they start to go down this path, it will help them. But to your point, I think it, AI can't solve everything initially. I think there'll be AI tooling, and even they talked about it, you know, hey, here I can help you with configurations, and I think that's key, especially when they started talking about another persona that they're selling to now in platform engineering, which uh, John Furrier and I started this kick back in February when we were talking at KubeCon around platform engineering as, hey, IT became SRE and DevOps and all started to come together into platform engineering, and. Uh, I had this experience when I was at AWS where the engineers are like, don't SRE me. Uh, and so if you start to go and look at how you have this division of labor, right. and it can't be automated away. And I, I think that it, there is so much complexity to this, I mean, all of this, not just the networking aspects to it. Uh, I, I definitely think that there will be moments of automation but I think that will be to enable people to move forward in their careers versus, hey, this is going to replace you. I mean, right. obviously, you know, there will be replacement and shifting of Well, there's going to be change. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's why, frankly, that's why positions in this industry that we are blessed to be a part of pay pretty well. Yes. And so my, my advice to folks in this industry, rule number one, don't name your farm animals. <laughs> because when it comes time to eat them, it makes it a lot harder if you've named it and you treat it like a pet. Yeah. So if you think of, yes, we're here at, at VMware Explorer, but when you think of the V as really meaning virtualization, there are all sorts of virtualization abstraction technologies. None of, they're not going to go away. Um, virtualizing an entire operating system you know, as, a, as a virtual machine is not going to go away in the near future. It will be augmented and it will need to, in, to interoperate with other technologies. Figure it out, right. learn it. Just don't, don't be tied to some very, very specific thing because if you're tying yourself only to, say, VMware, VMware is going to shift to the left and, 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 and come up with something new. I mean, just look at, look at the introduction of, of uh, you know, vSAN and NSX over the years, new disciplines that come in. So that, that, that doesn't change. Um, I, think, I think the one thing to watch uh, and the one thing that Broadcom will have to navigate carefully is the... Um, you know, I, you know, they say that our reality exists between our ears, but that's not the reality. It's our reality. Um, the reality for someone who works at VMware is going to be very, very different, possibly, than the reality that exists in, in the rest of the world. And there's going to be a lot of noise as, as those changes um, move different people's cheese along the way. So, number one, don't, don't name your farm animals. Plenty of opportunity moving forward. More opportunity than ever before in this space. Yeah. So I think I, I, I'm, I'm bullish on this. No worries. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think that, you know, that's a good place for us, I think, to leave it. I think on a positive note with uh, everybody, because I agree with you having gone through that with HPE when they split from HP to HPE, and I was over there, and I told people, I said, it's always worse on the outside what you're hearing than what's happening on the inside. Not if you're impacted, but when you're going through that, you got to stay the course and you got to you know, look at where's, where is it getting us to, because I think that's the positive way. And I think there's so many good things that can come out of this acquisition, but so we'll next wrap. Time, next time, 
Yeah. Big argument smackdown. I, I, we're going to have to figure Big, it out. we got to figure I, it out. I'll, I'll, I'll have to plan this better. Contrarian, yeah. And we'll, we'll have to figure it out. Uh, but, you know, hey, thanks for joining us. For Dave and myself, we're here with theCUBE live from VMware Explore, and we're continuing our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Thanks, and we'll be right back. Thank you.